Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's lovely to have such a big group uh, to come and listen to Uri Katju Cinema 246 tonight with Christina Gamboa uh, upon invitation by both uh, Professor Vassal and Professor Bader, who will both start with the introduction. Let me just remind you real quick that uh, any questions can also be posed in the YouTube live chat or the Telegram channel that will be read aloud. Uh, after after the lecture, there will be room for discussion by anyone. Just raise your hand. We will pass around the microphone, um, and we hope that everyone uh, will enjoy the talk. Thank you. So thanks a lot to be to be here. It's really nice to to be in the real rooms all together again, even if uh, we say hello to the people uh, behind the camera. Uh, and it is uh, very nice for us to, to welcome uh, Christina Gamboa, to welcome uh, La Colle, which is this uh, uh, architects cooperative um, that starts in the 2010 or something like that in, in Barcelona. And that are going so fast, doing and, and building so so quickly and so efficiently and so rapidly and so brilliantly, and um, they receive recently uh, different prizes. I think Eric Schilling Prize. I think uh, the Miss Van der Rohe uh, Emergent Award. But it is the first ones, <laughs> and there will be many, many others. And I think it's very important uh, for our students to be there and to listen to Christina Gamboa, because finally, they are not much older than a lot of you. And uh, when we are in the schools, we see your energy and we try to, to follow your dreams and your wishes and all what you dream for the society and for the architecture and for the inhabitants and for the people and for the affordability, how it is possible to live all together nicely. And it is so important that these wishes, immediately, they have realized them. So it means that as students, you have to keep your dreams, you have to keep your wishes. Eh? It's not a question to become professional. No, it's what is important, it is to keep your energy and to do like they do everywhere in the world. We need that. Well, uh, also from my side, welcome, uh, Christina. I'm also happy uh, that we, we, like many of us today, had the same idea to invite La Col. Uh, for obvious reasons. It's also uh, a talk in the Urban Talk series with Habitat Unit, uh, and we welcome everybody from TU as well, from across the street. Um, it's done together between Anna and Christian behind you um, and myself as organizers. Uh, usually we sit in floating on Wednesdays, but now we're here on Tuesday. So it was uh, a super beautiful link between all of us uh, writing emails to Lacol uh, that you thank you thankfully you answered with a yes to come here um, and there's not much to add to your very beautiful uh, encouraged introduction maybe uh, a few words about Christina um, she's uh, an architect and teacher uh, she studied at EDSAP and the University of Stuttgart uh, so maybe there was also an Erasmus in there um, and is co-founder of La Colle, uh, where she focused on developing cooperative housing projects. Uh, she currently teaches uh, also at AA and at EDSAP in Barcelona. And what I think is super interesting for me and with where I bring my curiosity also from my collective practice is uh, how can you do these architectural adventures um, in a collective practice, but also with a collective output? in a way, because uh, I think that's a very rare undertaking and I'm very curious what we can hear today. Thanks for coming.
So hello, hello everybody. Um, thank you for the, the introduction to both of, of us, of you. It's a pleasure to be here, and um, yeah, um, really, really an honor to to share our work here. Yeah, I can try. I can't try to speak louder. I, yeah, sorry, my voice is quite, so I will try it. I don't, I will try it. So. Ah, okay. 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 So, yeah, I was kind of, th thank you very much for inviting me. And I will try to speak loud. I usually like, I'm quite shy, so probably you have to advise me in a certain moment if I'm just kind of going uh, down. So basically, um, community infrastructures, I will explain uh, how, we, how we understand it. First of all, just to say that I'm kind of voice today of La Col. Um, I saw also my name in the poster, and I think that it's kind of a uh, collective work. We are a nonprofit cooperative of workers uh, founded in 2014. After uh, also some years working and sharing a space uh, together. And basically, La Col is as kind of a consequence of a specific moment in Spain. So we finished our studies in 2011. So in the middle of the economical crisis, where many of our colleagues were leaving uh, Spain to work uh, in Switzerland, Germany, many countries, and also in a moment where architecture was kind of being involved and part of kind of this kind of machine of um, speculation and also kind of the housing uh, bubble. So it was kind of an opportunity to redefine the, the role of the architect uh, in our environment and also an opportunity through working together to sharing our skills and knowledges to become kind of a stronger and being able to remain in Barcelona. So uh, basically, this has been an organic process. So we had no idea about how we organize. We had no idea about which kind of projects we th will um, came uh, on the way. Basically, we start, um, as I was saying, as a students, and many of the projects that we did had the final, kind of the final project, our studies was in relation with the surrounding, with the neighborhood where we were based, and which was kind of the starting point. Now, uh, almost uh, eight years later, since we um, constituted the cooperative and started with professional work, this is a bit kind of the mirror of ho how we are working. So. We are 13, as I was saying, co-founders, but we are working in between kind of uh, an area which we call it like just kind of the, the build area, just to, to the design and construction of certain of, of cert some of these infrastructures, but it's totally linked to an area that we are kind of we are kind of sharing in the in the office, which is called about kind of how we can push these projects, how we come to promote promote understood as a way of and sharing knowledge, the pedagogy, certain tools such participation, housing policies. Um, um, even uh, being involved in energy transition initiatives in the city. So this relationship between ways of organizing and articulating with society and also intercooperation with other stakeholders as part of the way we work, it's also as a reflection of this um, different uh, interest, different um, specialities, and as, as, as I was saying, uh, skills that we share the different uh, members uh, of LACOL. And basically, last year, we were kind of thinking about what we have done and what we want to do. And we arrived to this kind of sometimes complicated uh, sentence uh, or kind of words that we work to generate community infrastructures for the sustainability of life as a key tool for eco-social transition through architecture, cooperativism and participation. And uh, basically, we understood this idea of uh, community um, infrastructures as basically kind of devices, um, institutions, uh, physical and non-physical projects led by the communities that basically we saw a potential 
to implement certain new practices uh, to be more sustainably, socially, environmentally, politically, economically. And that's why we understood architecture more as a tool, as a, as a process, uh, not that the final outcome. So that's why we think like architecture is part of this process through social economy, so through cooperativism and the participation that it's also quite um, complicated award, but basically with communities, with kind of the existing networks. And this is something that basically we learned by SANS, by Barcelona. Barcelona, it was an industrial city with a um, huge heritage of a strike and political action. And basically we are based in SANS, which is uh, in the left part, which was kind of this industrial area in the outskirts of the city center, like the historical city center. So this was a neighborhood that uh, was born with industrial uh, activities. So the neighborhood, the people, the, the housing and the neighborhood in a way arrived later as a workers neighborhood. And with this activity also, the different uh, organizations from the workers arrive. And this is an image from La Llata Sansenko, a cooperative of consumers that was established in the neighborhood. So basically, um, we understood that uh, with this heritage that a cooperative is basically an structure, a common uh, own structure, that uh, it's a way that we could collectively fulfill certain goals or needs. In that moment, it was a moment where it was really affordable to have food. So basically, this was a cooperative to collectivize the provision of food. But basically, it was after that also a way to understood the way to provide collective funds and became certain institution that was kind of even providing a welfare um, policies, helping unemployment unemployed people, but helping workers when they were struggling and a strike, doing a strikes, also um, uh, education. So finally, a certain uh, identity and subjectivity was born through that moment. And the cooperative was part of different uh, as unions, uh, federations, and many other like initiatives that uh, came and uh, arise in that moment. So we are part, uh, we are kind of um, learning from all this history, all this uh, heritage. So we are not inventing anything from a scratch, from new. We are just understanding how we can develop new kind of infrastructures. And the outcome of all these kind of relations was a kind of a cooperative neighborhood. And we call it also cooperative ecosystem that basically production and reproduction, and also even the production of housing, uh, transport, and many other kind of resources uh, was collectivized. So this was kind of the main idea that we have behind our work. And this was also part of the learnings of a neighborhood. In this neighborhood, before we arrived as a students, there was many projects from self-managed autonomy, squad movements, that was kind of discussing about how in a moment of crisis, can we provide certain alternative, how we can in a way establish this uh, network of solidarity to have a more decent and be a life that was to be a uh, life in a way. So basically, uh, as I was saying, as a students, three of the members of LACOL choose Camballó as a final uh, project in the university. So it was the way that we, get, uh, we got involved in the area. We start knowing the neighbors, the struggles, the history uh, around this uh, area. And sometimes uh, we used to know, talk about social innovation, but it was precisely because of this history, because uh, it was a place that from the 70s was supposed to be green area and facilities for the neighborhood. But in 2011, 2012, anything was done. So it was, it, it was 13 years, 30, 30 years uh, of um, a struggle for the neighborhood. So it was a process for us of social accumulation of knowledge of trajectories. And we like to understand our work uh, in this way. So, um, and I was saying that our uh, work is really connected also with this political moment. So um, this was an image of June 2011 when the neighborhood basically make a demonstration and a countdown strategy saying if anything has changed 
uh, we will start doing by ourselves. And this was a month later of the Occupy movement in uh, the main square in Barcelona, Plaza Catalunya. So it was a moment also where kind of this power of the society, this um, need of other ways of organizing economy in the city was needed. And so all this power was kind of bring or brought to Camballó. So this was the beginning of the transformation of those area. So it was um, the moment that where new protocols of urban transformation was established, understanding that there were kind of certain needs and certain um, yeah, kind of projects that were kind of uh, organized around the area in whole the neighborhood. So this was a place where from the squad movement, from the formal uh, neighborhood association, all it was a, a place of synergies from different backgrounds to just understand that another city can be developed in another way. And this was for us a school. So we basically came from uh, the school of Barcelona, which was kind of um, really a kind of a model that has that transformed Barcelona since the 90s with super strong figures, well-known figures uh, of the history of architecture in Barcelona. So it was a way to, in a way, deconstruct our way of understanding architecture, understand how our knowledge could be uh, in service of the new um, conditions. And this is how we start to be involved in the transformation. So it was new protocols of urban transformation of provision architecture, uh, being involved in the communities that were transforming uh, this area, being involved in different commissions and working groups, understanding time, the existing materials, the skills as part uh, of our work and how kind of just the instrumentality of the spaces to react of uh, or be like inhabited uh, by the people. And it was also the beginning of being involved in also new ways of management the city. So Camballó has been a self-managed space for um, now uh, 11 years. And basically we realized that um, we have to understand different scales uh, of operating and Camballó was the opportunity for us to understand that can be a public cooperative community management. So the legitimacy that the community uh, gain through the experience of Camballó allows the municipality to establish a contract, a citizenship heritage contract of 50 years to develop and manage the area. So it's also it's a way to give the safety or, the, or to, to visualize all these ways uh, of practicing, giving kind of um, a framework that, uh, and a recognition that allows this to expand and to evolve through years. And this was kind of the way that it was a certain kind of invisible, kind of a reproductive structure of different um, committees. And we were really involved in a space design negotiation uh, and a strategy. And our knowledge was uh, shared and was uh, with other knowledges from people who has been fighting and struggling in urban uh, fights for many years, um, people who has been um, involved in urban planning and for carpenters. So it was a huge range of um, knowledge put together in this place. And basically uh, we understood that the area needs economical activity because this was an industrial former uh, place. And we also, uh, in, the, in the middle of the housing crisis, we wanted also to make uh, some kind of um, project around that. So Lacol, we get involved with the local economy activity and housing. And this was the beginning of um, two projects that it's been uh, ongoing nowadays. But basically, uh, it's kind of this constellation of needs, activities and functions that are operating at the same time in a piece of the city in a quite paradigmatic self-managed uh, space. And this was for us the, um, the way to realize that before that, we uh, we were also being involved in participatory process by the municipality in a really kind of a top-down uh, experience, and we realized that we want to, to we wanted to be involved not from consultation but to control. So this idea that kind of projects like uh, Camballó, and also this idea of involving social economy, housing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a way to understand infrastructures of emancipation also to be to be more active to have the control about our environment in different scales. And uh, 
the first kind of community infrastructure that I wanted to present is Coopolis, which is a, a incubator of social economy. And this was this group of people in the assembly of Cambalio trying to understand how we can implement new activity, new economical activities to re um, like to reactivate the, the site. And this was uh, one backhand space. This is the main block in Cambalio. And we can only see like these chimneys that appear on the top. So it was kind of a temporary intervention inside. But basically, Coopolis wanted to be a kind of a counter power. So in, in one side of Barcelona, we have a public infrastructure to promote um, economy, which is called Barcelona, Activity, Barcelona Activa. And it's part of um, IT technology and um, kind of media's um, economies. And we wanted to generate another pool, kind of another hub of social economy, a place um, managed by the community, but also in a co-production or co-management with fundings from the municipality and the state to produce a knowledge and to make social economy accessible and also a way to spread it around. And basically, this was done with collaboration with the district, and this was um, allows us to intervene in a, in one of these blocks temporary. So basically, it was uh, just a matter of inhabit all this old um, um, block, and it was a first phase, which was like over here. It basically was the space where some uh, technicians could start developing a program of um, implementing the activity of this uh, equipment. And in a second phase, classes, classrooms, and also uh, proper spaces for uh, new companies to grow was being developed. And basically, with this was done. Meanwhile, a public infrastructure, will, a public facility will be developed in the area. So basically, it was to to just develop small interventions to increase the habitability, the quality and the comfort of all those area. So it was a matter of just kind of removing certain parts of the roof, just generating uh, a space of a higher level of temporary comfort and just making kind of a certain connection with the street that it was in a different kind of levels. And this was done again with the process of intercooperation with a, co a cooperative of carpenters that were established in Cambalio using the resources that we found. And this was kind of the first phase. And then we just kind of go kind of connecting certain areas. Here in between is where the chimneys also uh, were um, introduced to force kind of the cross ventilation and uh, allows kind of to be uh, in comfort during uh, summer. And again, the same strategy replicated kind of these boxes that can be uh, assembled and disassembled in the future that uh, allowed classes to be, but also expanding the activity and the knowledge also in the street and the other areas uh, of Cambalio. And the third space where the new projects are kind of um, growing here and this became a space of interaction between different kind of projects and also a space where even the people who is involved in the management and la Col has been involved for a certain moment we are now just kind of leading this to be really autonomous um also discuss about challenges of the urban and uh, basically it's a place where we are discussing about the potential of social economy to be to deal about migrations about how people without even uh, papers right can be uh, through work through um, economic activity be um, uh, having their rights it's also about housing and this is also a space where now we are discussing how we can replicate also co uh, cooperative housing but also discuss about energy transition and how we can also have a social economy hub of energy transition but this was an activity or kind of a, a device that was kind of tested in Cambalio but with this process of uh, discussing with different scales, the Catalan government uh, was kind of giving funds to replicate it with different agents, with different networks in different territories of Catalonia, with the idea of uh, spreading um, the knowledge and the tools and giving the people uh, the possibility to implement different kind of projects following this uh, cooperativism uh, model. So we basically, it was basically not to invent anything, just to make it accessible to the to the people and understanding the effects that could, they could have uh, in the in the in the surroundings in the areas. And this is something that. Sorry, we have to take it. Just 
Oh, the, no, no, it's all fine. It's just for the video. Just, that happens in just a second. We want, uh, we want to share our computer audio for the online people. So, oh, then. So, there we go. Thank you. And part of part as outcome of all these interrelations between um, different um, cooperatives, but also different agents, a project came. It is La Comunal, which is, as, is where La Col is uh, also, it's where we, where we have our space nowadays. And basically, this is a second level cooperative. This was an initiative that emerged when many of us were kind of looking for a space. Basically, La Col, it was a kind of a really super small uh, place in the ground floor with one of the street. And suddenly, many other projects were looking for a place. So basically, we realized that we can look for a place together, kind of sharing also some kind of infrastructures, but also provoking also a uh, a sharing process that also allows us to strength and even to scale projects or emerge new projects from all those relations. And this is kind of the beginning uh, of La Comunal. And La Comunal, it's interesting because it's it's developing a private uh, piece of the city. And also it's interesting because when we are facing kind of a process of gentrification and a process of speculation, it's also affecting not only the housing, but also even the productive activity, the activities in the street, in the city. So it was also an opportunity to develop a piece of the city that wants to be accessible for many projects and wants to be open to the surroundings. And basically this was possible because this was a protected building where the private uh, owners could not develop housing, could not demolish and develop private housing. So we took this the, the opportunity to propose them a project and we had to deal with kind of these strict conditions of the place. So the main blocks that uh, when there is kind of a small house from the director of the formal industrial activity, these three blocks and one fourth in the other street were totally protected. So the only thing that we can intervene is in these in between spaces. But th the thing it was that it was basically a really flexible and adaptable uh, infrastructure. So it was a matter to add certain services, the stairs, the connections to generate this kind of uh, cooperative, uh, this cooperative space. So it was again this idea of understanding the resources, the site, the existing condition and adding this at the same time bioclimatic uh, device because it is a place with a huge buildings uh, quite tall buildings uh, around. So the sun, it's not arriving most of the time in during the year. So only in the roof, we can a bit of uh, it. So it was also a, process, a, a place where we can exchange the air in summer and winter inside. And also space of interaction, it was the stairs, the services were uh, there. And it was basically, um, a matter of understanding these different layers of the of the of the place. So this kind of fixed structure, this in between gaps where we can intervene, and then a series of different needs based on the different users. So we also establish a certain architecture of the participation of the different projects uh, in the place to define finally in the place the needs, understanding of, of the area, and the proposition. And from outside, it's basically the existing building without fences, making kind of the, st the street kind of more um, uh, generous and establishing this diagonal with a new courtyard, a new even a square that uh, we wanted to create to provide a space for the, for the neighbors to meet to and also even certain infrastructures to use it. And this was outside with all these restrictions this idea of connection with the street, that it's always open, this multi-purpose room, and also how these kind of new devices were kind of arriving here where we can uh, see it. And this was the space where we can just basically intervene really rough, roughly, like no conditions, no protection, and just kind of uh, this new language of the, something that really simple, um, just get this kind of technologies, certain language of what it was uh, existing, understanding the construction and following the pattern of the of the windows, doors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And inside, basically, just uh, updating the tech, the, tec the technological uh, 
equipment and leaving each use to fulfill their needs and the appropriation of the space. And this is an image from, from Lacol. So basically, this was kind of, for us, this idea of community infrastructures, but basically projects lead by the community uh, in different ways. And basically that remains in the place for a long time to really have the opportunity to develop and, in, and have an impact. So all those le learnings were in parallel with this work with housing. But housing, as we understood also as cooperative housing, it was part of these infrastructures that we were kind of providing these devices and these policies that can be replicated. But why uh, this is a struggle with housing? Because basically we are in a city that we only have 1.52% of social housing, a city with uh, a huge pressure of international funds uh, and where the individual ownership is kind of the base. It's a cultural matter since the dictatorship. So it's provoking also. So the, we have no public tools, mechanism to control the prices. So this is also provoking. There is no right to housing, no right to the city, but also many effects in terms of health. And this is just also with another layer, which is kind of the energy price in Spain, it's increasing extremely, like 40 times, 14 times, uh, the energy is 14 times more expensive a couple of months ago than one year before. So if you talk about affordable housing and sustainable housing, it's about how we access, how we own, how we can remain in the city, but how we can have kind of better conditions, health conditions, and uh, also comfort. And this was kind of our approach to housing, but the key point was the ownership. So again, it was to this relation with Cambalho, this, uh, with this kind of experience of self-management, of looking for alternative. And this was an uh, initiative that it was totally uh, instigated by for the citizenship. And trying to understand where in between the state, the market and the community, we can provide this kind of third sector um, model in Spain, something that it was existing in the 70s, but during kind of 80s and 90s, it almost disappeared. So we had, again, to introduce practices and ways of organizing. And basically, um, this kind of new model, and we call it new model because in the 70s, it was a lot of construction, constructions of cooperative so cooperative of construction housing, but once the housing was completed, the, the ownership was divided and each inhabitant were the owner of their flat. So the potential of keeping a collective ownership and also keeping a kind of a, a structure that allows the management of the resources was essential. So this was kind of the, the model, a non-profit cooperative based on collective ownership where the inhabitant is member of the cooperative, have the control of it, but has only the right of use one flat. They cannot exchange and speculate uh, of it. And also this was producing this non-speculative effect, this project that are led by the community, affordable, inclusive, or trying to be as inclusive as possible through time, sustainable and replicable as part of this idea of making social market or producing social economy. And of course, this is something that, again, we are not learning uh, or we need to learn about experiences. And for example, it was really important for us, policies like SAL, because we didn't want it to fulfill kind of the needs of one community. We really wanted to implement a kind of an, a model, if we can say it model. So it was an idea that to implement certain policies. And in the 70s, during the social revolution in Portugal, it was this initiative of SAL. So it was a moment where kind of the citizenship took, um, were involved in the development of, of popular housing. And it was through a multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary uh, organization of teams. And this was basically involving different methodologies, but also understanding the details, the labor, the circular economy, a kind of co labor and economy was part of all these processes and the effects on the surrounding. And at the end, it was a matter of genetic community. So much more than the interesting or beauty projects from uh, CISA, for example, all this ecosystem, all these protocols were uh, really interesting for us. So with, this is the, the assembly of La Borda. So La Borda was our first approach to collective housing and was possible because the collaboration of the municipality. So it wasn't as a pilot, a pilot project. 
So the municipality established a leasehold of the land for 75 years to the to the community because of the leg legitimacy of Campbell Law and because it was this need of establishing new kind of alternative. And this was how we could develop this project. Otherwise, with the pressure of the prices in Barcelona, it would be really, really difficult. So, and in this moment, with uh, kind of all this um, experiences of organization of understanding this relation between the model and the architecture we established this relationship so it was a self-development project where we know the where we knew the user and we could involve them um, in the discussions in the in the decisions from the design to the control and management and also the management it was important to establish certain strategies during uh, the project this idea that the community wanted to have a certain interaction so this allows us to redefine the collective housing program this idea of the collective ownership as a way also to understand that the house is the building and it has to be flexible and adaptable and also following Havrak and uh, this idea of an open uh, support and an infill, so generating this open infrastructure. This idea of sustainability and comfort, which is also related with awareness, with uh, pedagogy, but also with an active user in a passive strategy. And also that we realize that the needs and the the, um, the, the a developer wants to reduce the cost of the construction, but if you are going to live there, you really want to reduce the cost of the of the of the inhabit the place. So many strategies. Maybe it was all this discussion about the cost in the beginning, but also kind of the effect of uh, after after the construction during the lifespan of the building, and affordability, which was kind of a key point, and we understood as also as part of these opportunities to redefine. Uh, that electoral design. So it was essential to establish strategies of reduction of cost, simplicity, phases, but the, the most important part, like challenging also the standards of the housing uh, in the market. And this was part of a series of discussion that took from 2000, 2012, it was, it, it was when the project emerged with a really kind of a small assembly and then being more complex in terms of organization. And in 2014 is when we started the design. So all these discussions about architecture were developed in parallel of the legal and financial development and also this organizational development. And basically, we were always working in workshops with the General Assembly, with the, all the people in the, in the, of the community, but also with the different committee groups from financial, legal, community, co conviviality model, uh, communication uh, and architecture that we were kind of it was kind of our link to the to the community and i think that through this process we really managed to fulfill or to challenge these standards so through these conversations and because we know the users we had kind of the opinions we were also um, it was also possible to arrive to municipality and said we want to make some change and this was so the process was a key point uh, for us so again so this idea of methodologies tools, the language, the way we explain, we, we make accessible and we keep, we, we uh, have information about the users with different surveys and mechanism to understand the diversity of the users, the situation. And this was also process to understand, like maybe it's not your need, but it's the need of the other. So this idea of making community through the project was also uh, essential. Realize about the effects of prices being an energy in the life of the dwellers and the conditions of the dwellers. And here is where the design started. And basically, this is Cambalho, this huge area that, that explained it. So this was an in-between situation in between the historical neighborhood and the industrial, formerly industrial area. And as part of the understanding of the program in the building, it was part of understanding that there are different levels of interaction, different facilities in the neighborhood and in the area with workshops, libraries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, which kind of needs we do? Which kind of common spaces do we need? Because we don't want to be isolated; we want to be complementary. And here is how the discussions about program started. Also, understanding that we had we had a fixed number of square meters and a fixed number of total amount of units. So if we wanted to, to introduce the community areas, these common spaces, it was in relation also how, with the units. So it was a matter of understanding how we can collectivize certain services, how we can understand the needs of the equipment inside the unit and how this changed from just kind of the stairs or certain, certain kind of um, 
common areas as a circulation through a continuum from circulations, installations to common areas and housing. So this transition from the public to the common to the private was part of this process as also a way to organize the program in the building, open a, pa a public passage that connects the historical neighborhood with the, pub the, the future park of Camballó, allocating the common areas in the ground floor of this transition, but also giving a cooperative of consumers in the ground floor to also give activity to the, to the main street. And in the second level, we see this kind of multi-purpose room also as a way to organize a program with different levels of comfort and understanding also that we have different configurations that we will see also as part of the environmental performance. And all this around a courtyard, which became the core of the community and remains a popular um, popular typology of the Spanish, uh, Spanish housing around a courtyard. And uh, so through the working of the program, we understood this relation with the city, with this cooperative consumer, this public passage arriving to the courtyard where we have all the kind of the bike parking because we managed to change the regulation of parking after 18 months of discussing and struggling with the technicians, uh, we managed to establish a, re a, regu a new regulation that can be replicated to other projects. And this allows us to not build the parking, which has a huge environmental impact, but also implement new models of mobility. And um, this was also a strategy of uh, saving money. So we had a small budget, so we, will, we wanted to invest it in the quality of the units instead of a huge concrete uh, underground uh, floor. And basically from the courtyard to the common areas, this uh, kitchen and link to the, um, and also this multi-purpose room that was kind of allocated uh, in the first floor with these stairs that arrived to the guest room and this unfinished uh, laundry. But from this multi-purpose room, you have this connection with the street. And it's also a way to see from the street that something different is happening, another scale of domesticity and a space that is going to be inhabited in different ways during the year because there are different levels uh, of comfort arriving to the courtyard and the terraces and spaces. But it was this idea that starting from the program, we can also save energy. We can redefine even the levels of comfort, the qualities of the, the different spaces. It was a strategy of um, sustainability linked to these kind of devices that we could uh, implement. So the first idea was to reduce the demand through program and then allocate the program in the building. And once we had kind of this densification of the south facade with the maximum of units possible at the uh, fourth, uh, at the north facade in the upper floors, leaving this um, space that wanted to give compactness, also to reduce the, the external facades with this greenhouse that allows to have this kind of collective energy saver device, which was also protecting the environment, which also allows people to feel that they home. It's this continuity, this continuity from inside to the courtyard arriving to certain places. And this is how in, in, in winter, where the greenhouse is closed, the flats are trying, uh, we kind of recommend to ventilate through this um, atrium. In summer, this is provoking this chimney effect with a cross ventilation and with really simple shadow, simple, simple, super simple shadow system. So really kind of sim simple strategies based on the control of the user uh, all the time that allows to decrease the demand uh, of energy. And this was after, so once we had kind of the program, then this, this passive strategies, and then we just provide kind of the active uh, supply needed. And once this, all this was defined, we entered to the flat, and this idea of open infrastructure was uh, uh, proposed as a matrix of um, rooms, I would say, um, uh, rooms that can be understood so sorry so basically in Barcelona we have the minimum dwelling is 40 square meters so the idea was to define the dwelling as two rooms the bathroom and minimum kitchen and a terrace and these yellow rooms in between are common areas of private use which was the legal mechanism that we found to allow flexibility and change the sizes of the units through time so we are not registering a, uh, a unit of 40 60 or 80 square meters basically we are 
registering uh, the register of the unit, it's all are 40 square meters and are going to change through time based on the needs of the community. So this is what's the legal mechanism that we also we found to really guarantee flexibility. Otherwise, it's something that maybe it's not that easy uh, when you have um, bureaucracy contracts and where like all this is behind uh, architecture. And basically, it was this understanding of the lifespan uh, or the, from how we are changing needs through time, make this visible through people in a way to decodify this idea that I have to have a, a, a flat that will give response to all the needs during time. So basically, this you can rotate, your flat can expand, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So implementing management uh, tools, and um, again, this idea of different uh, levels um, of participation or a control. So we define a really kind of naked infrastructure through kind of these walls, the, the, the bathroom and kitchen. The kitchen was, is kind of a furniture that can change through time. So this can, and then lighter structures that the inhabitants will uh, place. Arriving to the final outcome, this kind of um, 40 square meters depth typology and the other really kind of narrow that will change in each floor in the relation with the street and the common areas and also the relate the articulation of the different typologies we can see like from the medium uh well like all this kind of configuration no? for example in the first floor we have the the large medium and uh, small and medium that are kind of working in different having a different relation between the facade and the and the courtyard and then the inhabitants are basically living inside if they want my privacy less privacy organizing inside wherever they want and just by ending like once this matrix was defined we were starting to talk about construction and basically um, the community asked to study concrete metal and wood structure and we realized that um, with um, CLT the structure became the distribution once the structure was built the like the building was kind of in a way defined this kind of the small size of the domestic uh, space was helping to optimize the, the structure. So this allows us to really, with a low budget of 850 euros per square meter, building um, and introducing the CLT. And basically is this kind of, is all these kind of walls, all these connections are defined uh, in the structure, but then it's a matter of just kind of closing some doors, opening in another side, finishing um, the flats, which as I was saying, it was really naked, just kind of a concrete pavement to keep inertia and thermal mass and uh, almost done. And the kind of this um, different layerings for fire and acoustic and then this relation between rooms, this relation with the uh, terrace, these simple shadow systems, and um, kind of the life of the dwellers, kind of inhabiting all those uh, areas uh, through time. And also because of the budget, we left we left all the common areas unfinished. So basically, since three years ago, when people start living in La Borda, the common areas are being finished uh, with self-construction, with the, the waste of the structure, for example, this, like the, the floor is the waste of the structure. And basically, because of the, um, there are two carpenters living in La Borda, has been easier to, to manage it. But basically, it was a matter of time and effort, but a matter of being like feel um, also kind of link and connect and be able to decide what is needed, what is missed. And also with the spaces, the beginning of the, the community activities, which this was also part of this idea of social interaction, but also part of this idea of new protocols uh, of care, new awareness and implementation of new measures of actions and habits, routines to live more sustainable. So we are trying to analyze the behavior of the building. We are giving a kind of an annual report of the environmental impact, understanding how we are reducing, but how we can even improve the con like the behavior and like the temperature of the washing machines. Uh, so kind of simple things that um, this kind of collective structure allows to, to discuss uh, and to implement. And this was about energy and but uh, about kind of social interaction. But we realized that uh, it was also about care. And this was when COVID arrives. So it was also a moment where we find the own protocols here. 
but also the infrastructure was used as we never thought. These spaces, this interaction between the street, the units, the common areas, were kind of full of sense. And people living in the world that were feel privileged to have implemented a space of for caring kids together, um, of socializing, of uh, giving mutual support and uh, to understanding how they were feeling, how we can help in this kind of situation. So sometimes people say that they implement La Borda, or they kind of promote La Borda in an emergency housing situation, or an environmental and housing situation, but never imagine uh, a COVID to arrive. So it was interesting to understand how we can also understand household in another way, because in Spain we were in a strong lockdown inside the family structure, inside the unit. So here they answer the household in a more complex way, full of different kind of singularities, um, negotiations, and basically the world became king in a certain moment, a concert hall, um, um, a school, and uh, many other kind of uses were kind of approaching uh, spontaneously. But precisely this kind of this potential of this kind of non-defined space, it was for us uh, kind of a learning to see it uh, in Paris. And um, basically, as I was saying, La Borda was a pilot project. Um, one year after starting La Borda, um, Barcelona en Comú, this left progress uh, party, entered to the municipality. They introduced uh, cooperative housing as a new housing policy as part of many other strategies to increase the affordable housing from 1.5 and, and affordable and social housing to 1.5 to 15 percent, which many hands are needed. And basically this um, allows um, or they did two actions. A board where all the stakeholders involved in La Borda and other projects were talking together about the challenges and the uh, like this product, this collective production of policies. Uh, but in the other hand, um, they implemented uh, several competitions for uh, the provision of land to allow new cooperatives to emerge. And basically, um, Cop de Fals was the first kind of iteration, this idea of the same principles developing a new uh, plot. And this was a, we, didn't, uh, we didn't win this, but it was the opportunity to start redefining what was like, crucial uh, of La Borda. And this was in a kind of a specific place next to the uh, high uh, way. So the idea of pollution, noise, and this kind of a really kind of um, the dichotomy of the plot was essential to understand the role of the circulations. So suddenly we understood the environmental performance of the building, the environmental strategies link to the role of the circulations and common areas, understood in a, in a way of layering the building from kind of um, really kind of neglecting the relation with the behind and open the building uh, to the south, to the, to the park. And this was a, the first time that we proposed to put kind of the circulations and next to the terraces in the most privileged area. So instead of putting it in the kind of in a, in a place where just kind of a matter of circulation, we give it the, the best uh, place. And this was a matter of understanding the sequences of a terrace, um, a gallery, kind of a greenhouse and also the units, but then this kind of a small courtyard that works as a as a way to provide clean air from 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 below from the from the park so kind of a machinery a way to understand the fluxes of air in the building arriving also to organize um, kind of a non-defined ground floor that could allow to have parking because in that area it has a sense but that also could be understood as a common a common area and then this matrix of a spaces that can be organized with different configurations even in a kind of a cluster living where a corridor became a room that can interconnect the different places but this idea of the common areas the circulation and the, the environmental kind of performance was key but we didn't uh, want that, we didn't win that. But La, La Balma was another land that the municipality put uh, in the provision of cooperative housing. And this time we uh, were asked for a community that were kind of involved in the area to, to, to give the technical assistance, we'd say. And this time um, we, we, we won. And this was in a quite um, 
exceptional place. People know it's a place in transformation, but it's an area that it's mostly a housing, and it was kind of um, the last plot to finish all this area with this kind of building from Boigas in that sense. But basically, what we wanted here is the plot. And this was a kind of really dense, compact area with a really small, quite a smaller plot. And basically, this was part of this kind of access with elderly housing, youth housing. This was also kindergarten, a daycare space, a high school. And, and kind of this was kind of a, a, a kind of an axis of different equipments and suddenly housing. And so we can hope we can uh, understand housing in relation with the surrounding. And the strategy was really linked to this uh, urban condition because it was also this street, it was part, you know, that in Barcelona we have this idea of the super blocks, which means that we are kind of keeping cars outside uh, the certain areas. So we are understanding that every three blocks, three per three, with pedestrian area, we will have the cars in the perimeter. But this was a perimeter uh, um, street. So we had to understand the, the condition of this street was quite uh, linked also again to noise and uh, the presence of the car through time. And also we had a real close facade from the, um, the high institute. So basically, we wanted to protect uh, from the noise of the street. The, the building in the other way doesn't allow the radiation arrive quite properly to the lower floors. So it wasn't a strategy, but at the same time, in the upper floors, this was a southwest uh, orientation, which is the most strong in Barcelona. So we understood how circulations, again, as a key point in the articulation of the of the program, it was uh, we were kind of allocating the third um, the first, second, and third level with the corridor as a threshold and with the possibility to become a gallery in the, in the east north facade, also next to the street, and then a balcony and a terrace and this corridor as a threshold and sun protection in the upper, uh, upper floors. And this kind of change of the, the way that the building is operating also allows us in the north facade which was in this access to allocate the common areas in a vertical relationship. So basically, this was kind of the main strategy. And again, this idea of a prefabricate a CLT system and a housing typology. So basically, arriving to this kind of compact um, kind of building where we, we can see kind of all these kind of uh, voids inside the building that allows also to show even the life outside and to understand that something different kind of it's uh, happening with this kind of this facade to the street where it's a bit it's a bit kind of dark but here there is kind of the stairs so you can constantly well you are moving with the different common areas from the rooftop to the unit or to the ground floor you are in relation with the surrounding but also the ground floor is quite open with a multiple post room open to the surrounding. And this is kind of this simple section with this core in the middle that works with installations, bathrooms, kitchen, and structurally. And then this kind of uh, corridors in both uh, sides that has also kind of a relation in the structure to make it uh, to work more kind of the most efficient way. And the learnings of La Borda makes us here optimize the wood to make it more affordable because in that moment, the prices were kind of um, increasing. And basically, we turn the structure in the other way around. It was not about kind of in a parallel way to the party wall like La Borda. Here we basically turn it. The facades and the core are structurally, and each panel of the floor, like the slabs, are inside the same unit to avoid the kind of acoustic kind of um, um, interactions, which also allows us to optimize the way we were kind of working. So it was kind of a process of learning by mistakes, I would say, like from La Borda and doing uh, to reduce as much as possible the volume of wood. And the uh, final outcome is this kind of this uh, relation with this in the in the ground floor with this multi-purpose room in relation with kind of a small patio courtyard with, that we have. The porch of entrance that allows certain independency to the multi-purpose room to be used for also for the neighbors. And this um, symmetric uh, plans where basically we just kind of change the circulations while the structure, technical installations is in the same place. And this kind of um, 
stairs in the in the upper uh, floor and as this, these asymmetries but also different conditions of the of the of the floor um we were kind of thinking that if you are living in the in the first floor maybe you are imagining kind of a day zone that it's kind of cross-sectional to the both facades but maybe if you are uh, living in the upper floor you want to face the day zone in the south facade so we wanted to in the understand how through a manual through certain kind of uh, instructions we could make people um uh allow them to really kind of change the way they were kind of inhabiting through really kind of uh, lighter kind of divisions that were kind of established in a certain moment with a kind of a modularity. And this is how this is kind of working in both directions. And now kind of several kind of um, typologies are there with this kind of this relation from facade to facade, this kind of in-between situation, also like kind of challenging privacy. Um, uh, and the limits of the unit, this kind of older spaces that became also spaces of gathering that uh, and of kind of playing and enjoying this relation with the street that of this is still inhabited. This was last July. So we really want to go there and see how think it's kind of changing and this kind of promenade while you are walking through the building, you are kind of enjoying kind of this view, but also kind of this even kind of a relation with the street in this kind of outdoor uh, space and this kind of multi-space. And basically this was kind of um, testing about the kind of the urban kind of uh, arrangement and the urban kind of form and the other projects that uh, kind of we have been are now pushing also the typology understanding and on, once the people is more aware about the model, the potentials, um, are they more interested about alternative ways of living. And this is Sutrak, which is going to be, we're going to be start the construction um, next year. And basically in that sense here, basically we kind of democratize the south facade. In La Borda we have these 20, 24 units in the south facade, four in the north facade. Here we wanted to just give everyone a relation with the southeast, southwest facade with a typology that works quite similar like La Balma with this kind of learnings and kind of iterations. But here what we did is basically this discontinuous unit and we introduce in the north facade a series of rooms that allows to have a larger or a smaller apartment, but in a discontinuous way. So all the rooms in the south facade, all the flats in the south facade are more or less with the same size. And we are kind of challenging families of structures to live in another kind of relation with kind of the public private common uh, realm but at the same time in la borda in sotrac we also allow to understand that well we can see it in the in the upper diagram this idea of the the rooms that allow to expand or to increase the units in a discontinuous way but also there is one floor that it's kind of a it's a cluster living where we reduce the private space to increase a kind of a common shared area of a live dining room and living room. And this was because I think that it was, it was kind of la borda done. People was kind of understanding the model. It was kind of a more kind of a, kind of a, kind of a trust that allows to go further in certain strategies that I think that the first, at the first step at the first time it was not uh, possible. So in each project, there is kind of a, kind of a challenge. And basically to start kind of concluding, this was an image from um, a the first project that we are developing in private land. So also we are constantly working in the idea that how we can implement this cooperative housing in private land because there is few public uh, land available. So we can we have to kind of to conquer to to go to a way that for private uh, properties, buildings and plots can become also developed by this model. And this is a group of women LGTB. Uh, plus um, uh, group and it was also um, a way to understand kind of the needs of them, the way of living, because they are also kind of struggling in different kind of direction where the condition of family, um, the condition of the individual's uh, the identity, it's kind of uh, very defined, where they are kind of pushing or imagining new ways of caring where they were aging because they are not having this kind of the structure family to support the care. And basically it was also a matter of understanding again, this non-jerarchical uh, typology that can be 
change through time if they need more assistance. But at the same time, it was a discussion about the levels of privacy. And here, the idea of the own room, like Virginia Woolf, this idea of like the intimacy, the space of kind of um, freedom, also of protection was really present. So it's in the other way around and almost in the facade, in the most kind of um, separate areas, we have kind of the individual rooms and the kitchens and kind of dining rooms are these spaces in relation uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the corridors. So this sequence, especially in the middle, we can see like where the spaces of interaction, we can see the kitchens and then to go into the most private uh, space as part of all these discussions about, um, yeah. The idea of even pleasure of gathering, etc., kind of discussions that were not emerging in other cooperatives, and it was present uh, in this one. So, as I was saying, you know, this idea of same principles, more variations from La Borda, La Valma, and the municipality uh, also did a second competition and a third competition, and this allows us to understand kind of different configuration, new challenges, scaling up a bit with kind of bigger blocks and continue working to make it affordable, inclusive as a model, as a system, as a kind of architectural um, design. And um, this is in parallel to defining also certain um, structures to share the knowledge. And we understood that we don't want to grow as La Col itself. We want to understand as an ecosystem and we are funding kind of different projects to, to um, in a way, expand all these kind of devices and mechanisms. And basically, this is La Dinamo. It's a foundation to promote cooperative housing. And this is kind of an autonomous uh, initiative that basically works for replication, for policing, um, for uh, assistance to group, of systematizing uh, knowledge, making affordable, kind of this idea of like, we don't want to keep the knowledge. We want this kind of just to, to be shared and to be expanded. And uh, basically to understand that we are living in a certain condition, so we have to understand how this can become, um, how we can kind of deal with different situations through creativity, so tools such community land trust and other ways. So also the agency of the architect and our agency has been linked also to imagining this way of repropriating um, the city and giving response to the challenges. And, the next step is how cooperative housing is being involved in an energy transition. But this, I think this, I will leave it because I've been talking a lot, but basically La Borda, it's implementing an energy community. And we think that uh, we have to manage the resources collectively, otherwise it's impossible to, to have certain kind of um, energy transition. So we are trying to understand the, con like how, the models of governance, how the pre-existing uh, projects that we have been involved in labor and in the neighborhood, how the relation with the municipality, universities, and communities can to can explore kind of uh, an, in, a, in a bigger scale of the management in terms of neighborhood, and how we can understand these fluxes of energy, care, uh, uh, waste, water, etc., uh, etc., et because. Uh, we have to um, understand this kind of this new kind of cycles and how we have kind of the, the existing resources um, there. But from this, we are again working in a kind of a network of engineers and other stakeholders to scale uh, all this initiative. But these are kind of just challenges and ideas uh, that we are working with. And I think that we can leave it here. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Good morning. The lights are back on. Uh, we are starting with our discussion round. And as per usual, we're starting off with a question from our first year. Straight in the back. Hi. Um, how do you decide what a district needs and do you talk to the people or yeah, how does this, this process work and um, how much time does it take? Yeah, thank you. Um, 
the idea. I wanted to explain a bit this, this connection from the neighborhood and certain initiatives because I think that um, sometimes as architects we can work through uh, commissions, through co uh, competitions, and in our case we have been uh, finding ways to have um, to be involved in the transformation from inside, and in a certain way we are not asking like, the community. And sometimes we are basically involved in bigger uh, uh, spaces of decision where basically we are just one neighbor more and we give our skills to implement certain strategies. So, so it's kind of a non, we are not from a kind of a top down asking, we are basically just uh, um, by them, next them, and even formulating questions to discuss about needs, not in a kind of a kind of as a kind of a continuous conversation. And this allows us to give much more information, but also to understand constantly um, how we can uh, operate, uh, I would say. And this needs trust and time. And I think that um, La Borda, as I was saying, began in 2012, for example. Cambalio last week uh it was the 11th anniversary also um this last project started one year ago just to imagine how we can organize um how we how we can have a space of governance in a scale in a bigger scale and this is starting with uh, energy community and certain kind of pilot projects but will need a lot of time so each project has the, its conditions and we cannot say it's all, always five ten 15 years, but uh, of course need time. But this time it's crucial because um, because allows to really um, empower. It's a, it's a word that I also don't like to use it, but I think that allows people to understand, to 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 engage in different ways, to be aware, to to learn together in a way, and basically, uh, yeah. But this is trust, but also time. Um, so, when you develop a site which has existed before, do you um, keep the history of it uh, like very much in mind, or do you just see it as a shell and go from there on a completely new path? Can you repeat it, please? I could, I could not hear the first part. Um, if you develop a site which has existed before, do you um, keep the history of it uh, in mind and keep it as a key element? Or do you just uh, see it as a shell and go from uh, there on? Well, I think that um, the first two projects that I explained it, like La, Comu uh, La Comunal and Coopolis, there was kind of an existing pre -exist uh, kind of existing building. And for us, this idea that the things that are there has a huge value, and it's a matter of understanding. It's kind of how it does it, how the materiality. Um, but I would say that we are trying not to keep it, but to understand how we can interrelate with it, to have also the, and um, it's not also about, enough, it's not also about the kind of a shell. I think that it's always kind of a, a relationship, a dialogue with the pre-existence because it's also understanding if this can operate in a different way, it can manipulate it. Of course, we think that there's a potential to intervene on those areas. So for us, it's the idea to, to really um, have the curiosity to understand all the layers of this existing uh, site place to then intervene, uh, making the most of the, the resources in, in a way. But also, it's totally com also linked to the resources that we have. Sometimes we cannot intervene, it's just basically add kind of something. Sometimes we can, uh, or, or because of the regulation. So I think it's kind of, um, it's changing one project to another one, but there is course a sensibility uh, within uh, linked to, of course, environmental performance, but also to the identity of all those places. Because in Barcelona, we wanted to, I mean, to neglect the industrial or even the workers uh, heritage and for us it was also a way to to put the value here in this past in this specific past uh, of the history of barcelona okay um yeah my question is um, when you live in these community areas um does the uh, privacy gets lost or because i think uh, there are different lifestyles uh, they 
are confronted with each other and what's the experience of these residents and yeah yeah um each community defines these different levels of privacy as part of this understanding of the program, the needs, and the, in the different workshops, uh, all these kind of discussions appear. So I think that there is no kind of a recipe where you can apply it in every project. So each project is going to be different in that sense. But at least in La Borda, we wanted to understand that it, this, it was kind of an open um, community because people can change and the building will be there. So it's not kind of um, something that really specifically done to the the people who is also in that moment. And um, this idea that there are different ways of inhabiting La Borda, it's also present. And I think that the, you can, there is this kind of model of conviviality where, um, for example, every Wednesday, there is kind of a collective dinner there. And in the collective dinner, there are around 40 people uh, organized when La Borda, there are 64 people living there. So not all the community is involved in this kind of activity and it's the same with others so there is kind of an openness of understanding uh, that different ways of living different needs are kind of coexisting and cohabitating in the same moment but at the same time i think that the, um, the equipment of the unit is also essential so in la Borda you have your own kitchen maybe a smaller than a conventional one because you also have the a bigger one but you have your own kind of bathroom etc et so you can decide about how you want to to, to share and also there is kind of other mechanisms like curtains and wherever so there's kind of different filters yet yet that you could include so um i would say that there is many ways of living it and people is feeling that they have their own space their own privacy but they also have the potential when they want to use of these common areas but they also they have dif different ways of inhabiting because you can use the kitchen with your friends with your family you, so it's this idea that it's part of it's extension of your home and you can use it as you want at the same time in a certain moment it's a, it's a space of gathering and i think that this is part of this uh for me it's the key of all these projects that it's not kind of a, a way a specific and a pre-established way of living so it's open that and this is your need is going to change through time so that's also kind of the potential I'm living in La Borda and I feel that my space, I feel kind of privacy. So, so I kind of, you can choose. Um, my question is kind of related to the first one, but um, in this context of um, community and policy oriented projects, um, to what extent your own and personal um, identity is essential for the project? I think that maybe I would say that it's linked to the limits or the con so, for example, Cambalho was always defining their own limits in relation with the municipalities. They want autonomy, they want decision, they want uh, economical independence. And in that sense, it's the way that you define these relations in, in the conditions and the limits are part uh, of this. So I think that through these collaborations, it's not a matter of losing identity. Sometimes it's even reinforcing it and allowing to 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 expand it and to 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 have a kind of a stability that allows these projects to grow, but at the same time to understanding uh, which is what you are asking to each Asian and which is the role of the municipality. Uh, in and also this is something that well you learn by sometimes by, by failure. Uh, by kind of sharing uh, experience with other experiences, but I would say that always this clear understanding of their roles, it's really essential. Mm -hmm. Is there any more? Yes, perfect. <laughs> um, I was wondering on how you do you do your decision making because um, as you're a collective and I think on the photo there were 12 or 13 people, I was wondering if you split up or if everyone has to agree on each decision or how you manage that because um, maybe take a long, long time. Um, <clears throat> thank you for the question, because maybe I can explain that. I think that there are kind of two levels in certain moments that in one hand, it's how we are operating in La Col, and 
each project. Um, so we are 13 co-founders, as I said in the beginning, and of course we cannot all stay in all the projects. But uh, so the idea is that um, there is a team, but it's always kind of rotating and changing about two, normally kind of two, three people. And, but there are spaces uh, once per week, we have like one afternoon always kind of book to discuss about projects. And during this kind of discussions, the goals and the main strategies are defined collectively. So in a way you have a guidelines from like the cooperative in internally to understand which kind of are the, the challenging and which are kind of the strategies in the project. And it's a way that it's also kind of collective and kind of a participation in the in the design or kind of, uh, of inside the call. And then there are the spaces of workshops with the community. And in that sense, we define also kind of um, architecture uh, or kind of a planning of how we understand these different kind of levels. And the first for us was also understand that um, it's you are not owning your flat. And this is something that you can leave the community in a certain moment. So we wanted to understand that um, we will we, there's kind of a limit about how you are going to define about the unit itself. And that's why we organize in the sense that we are, we have a kind of a, we call it um, collective, how we call it? Um, well, kind of a collective design, I think. Basically, a through a collective discussions, we talk about the values, the strategies, the needs, and the program. And this was done by consensus with all the cooperative the 50 people in that moment. So of course we work with different methodologies and workshop, but it was always by consensus and with all the members of the cooperative. And this was kind of defining the, gui the guidelines uh, of the project. Then um, we started to, start to define like the strategies, like uh, kind of different kind of, uh, I would say kind of even forms and ways of organizing program. And um, this was also done with worships by with everyone uh, discussing. But in that sense, I think that this we had certain kind of op uh, uh, options. I would say like a kind of an open discussion. Suddenly you discuss about different kind of options, kind of different kind of strategies formalized, and um, then um, we collectively define what we are going to choose inside the unit. And so it kind of, it is from the collective discussion to the election of options to the levels of appropriation of the user, there is different strategies of appropriation and participation. And so this was also defined previously and with the committee of architecture in Labordo, because it's also about, uh, about the expectations. Uh, and also uh, you have to, to be really clear about which kind of decisions are going to be developed, which not. And we are also always thinking that, of course, we have a knowledge and expertise, and we really put this on value also. So it's a matter to understand how we can always exchange knowledge. And in, I would say that at the beginning, we receive a lot of knowledge by the community. By the end, we give a lot of kind of proposition and knowledge also, no? So it's kind of changing. It's kind of do that this kind of from the beginning to the uh, to the end. It's kind of changing the relation about the participation or the involvement in a way. Um, yeah, and I think that this is also kind of following then with the management and the appropriation and et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. Yeah, I was wondering uh, what your studying environment was and when did you decide working on a uh, collective? Because, um, I mean, I'm working in a very uh, competitive way in my uh, teaching environment and the teachers really encourage working very competitive and not really collective. So I was wondering when did you really decide working as a collective and in a collective way? Well, um, I think that um, I think at the beginning, I think maybe it was a matter of emergency or kind of uh, need, but it was um, because we already established certain kind of practices as we share this space and in this space as a students, basically you have to develop your own individual project, but we have a spaces of discussion in between. So it was also a matter of understanding that, that we can kind of share thoughts and this goes further much 
uh, yeah, kind of much farther. And but at the same time, this idea that uh, we were in a kind of shift of the practice in Spain, where kind of bigger offices uh, kind of really hierarchical in a certain moment, but um, and we had to look for other models. So I think that basically this idea that. Um, we have, I have a kind of a, a skill that you don't have. If we can, if we share it. Maybe we we have kind of more potential, no, in that sense, and other views, et cetera, et cetera. So, I think it was not a kind of maybe a kind of a decision. We are going to work collectively. It was a matter of kind of just kind of doing. Uh, we were kind of just by doing this, and by yeah. But it was kind of the was the need, and also no. But it was beautiful because it was kind of an anomaly crisis. Like I think creativity, it's always kind of a key point. How do you think the role of architect is changing uh, now? And because when I was listening to you, I saw that you not only designed the project, but also beforehand you somehow created some common common ground for discussion. And how do you do it? And what tools you and your office have it in this process? Because I can imagine it can be really hard. I'm always thinking that um, it's not a matter of changing the role of the architect. It's because I really uh, love to see kind of kind of many ways of understanding architecture and the practice. And I think it's just a matter of understanding that we can operate from different places with this kind of this from this, as, I, as I was saying no Fred, from from administration with a specific clients uh, with um, so I think that the, the conditions that we can develop our activity are so kind of diverse so I think that it's not a matter of understanding that it's kind of uh, the way of practicing it was kind of another way as complementary and necessary as much others and we are always learning from all of all kind of our colleagues and precedents. But um, basically, we, um, as I was saying that we were kind of 13 and with different expertise, but, but we also um, encourage ourselves to even be uh, more specific in terms of the profiles, even to continue our uh, education. And for example, one of the founders of Lacole, well, Carlos studied sociology and all that. So it, it was kind of a matter of understanding even the needs that we had in the moment and also and working with other people. So it was a matter of understanding how we can have more skills, but how we, because to intervene in a certain area is not also a matter of an architect, it could be also a matter of um, uh, a facilitator, uh, I don't know, a sociology I was saying, but other kind of skills. So we are always trying to intercooperate to generate certain alliances sometimes really stable but uh changeable through one project to another one and for example when i was working with this woman uh cooperative we were also working with punsi which is a cooperative specialized in gender perspective in housing because of course it's another that maybe we don't have so this idea of working with kind of changing all teams it's also a mechanism to provide uh all this kind of knowledge and it was kind of the tool that we are applying It kind of looks like that might have been it for the questioning. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting. <laughs> um, it was so interesting. Uh, we were so happy to have you. Um, yeah, we're going to close the night here. Um, I would just like to remind everyone of the lecture on Thursday by Professor Dr. Banaventure Ndikung, which is um, Decoloniality in Space. It's going to take place online and you can check it out on the Udeka website or on the posters outside, the red ones. Other than that, uh, from our side, it's just a huge thank you and a good evening and maybe anyone would like to finalize with some last words or else we'll just go outside and have a beer together. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. No, just uh, thank you a lot because you are incredibly precise in all what you say and uh, you work in so many directions with a very very important precision and I, I think it's really important to say that it is not only construction of buildings it is also construction of cooperative constructions of uh, way of workings all together and i think it's really brilliant thank you very much